Jet Engine 3.5 has brought about the long-awaited components functionality along with some database optimization tweaks. That is, they now allow us to use custom database tables for our post metadata as well as our repeater fields. So now let's go ahead and see the components functionality in action using Bricks Builder. So let's jump right into it. To use the components feature, make sure you have at least version 3.5 of Jet Engine. As you can see, I have Jet Engine version 3.5.1, so that will work for me. And I will also be using ACSS and frames for this tutorial. That will speed up the process of creating the component. You can think of a component as a pattern or a template that allows you to override some parts of the component. WordPress calls it patterns with overrides. So basically you have your template. Let's say it has the heading, it has a featured image and some text, and then it has the design. So you don't want your users to mock up your design. So you create that component, you lock up all the other aspects and only allow the user to change some certain parts of the design, like some of the text and some of the styles, like the colors. Whereas the entire shape still remains the same, the user cannot change it. Because as we know, some of our WordPress users, once you give them the keys to the kingdom, or to the design, they will break something and then they blame it on you, the initial developer. So this time, you can now lock up some parts and only allow them to style the parts that you have agreed to allow them style. So let's see how it works. Now that I have the jet engine, so I'll go under jet engine, then to listings and components. Previously, it would just be called listings pre 3.5, but now it's called listings slash components because their functionalities have sort of been merged together because you can now create a component and then use it within a listing and have the best of both worlds. So before we go into that, let's go under jet engine. I like to make sure that I set up the jet engine to be as performant as possible. So under performance, make sure you have optimized DOM active so that you can get rid of some extra divs that jet engine were putting in before. Make sure you toggle off all the views they're not using. So if you are using Elementor, then toggle on Elementor and toggle off the rest. If you're using bricks, you can toggle on bricks and disable the rest. But here I'll just leave this active for now. I typically use the timber and twig views because that gives me the most like control over the HTML and CSS. But as a Bricks user, Bricks also gives you so much control. So you may not need timber and twig. It's mostly for people who use like the block editor or Elementor. They might prefer to use timber because this one doesn't add any wrapper divs or whatever. It gives you pure HTML code. So. Let's go ahead and now create our component. So I'll go under listings slash components. Now, previously you only see add new listing item. Now you see by the side of it, it's now add new component. So that's what we're going to be using. So I'll click add new component. Let me go ahead and delete the previous one I created. Now we can create a new one. So add new component. I'll give it a name, so I'll give it the same name again, feature card Oscar, because I'm going to be using one of frames patterns. Then I'll be using bricks to create it. Then I'll create component. So now we are in the template editing page or the component editing page. We also have to open up a separate window where we will now be adding in all of our controls with other builders like Elementor, you can add the controls directly in there in the builder. But for this one, you have to add the controls on a separate window. So I'll go ahead and open a new window, go back to the same place, which is Jet Engine, listing components. Now that I've created the component, if I hover over it, you now see there's an option to say edit component settings. When you click on that, it now takes you to this window. This is where you define all of the controls that will be ported into your component. So let's make this at the left side. Then 
I'll go under the feature card now and I'll create the base layout. And this is where frames and ACSS shines. You can just watch how fast I can create my feature components. I'll literally just go under templates, choose the source as frames, and then I'll just search for feature card and see which one. I think I'll choose this Oscar, insert. And we already have our components already created. All we have to do now is now replace what we have as static values with our control values. And to do that, we first need to actually create those control values. The way I like to do it is I like to name it the same way I name it in my builder so it's easy for me to remember. So as we can see here in the builder, it's already been named because that's one powerful thing about frames. They like to make everything organized. So as you can see, we have heading. So I'll just now create controls based on these names. So I'll come back to the setup. Then I'll say create new control for content. I'll give the first label to be heading. The control type should be text. And the default value, I'll just give it what was here before, which is this is a placeholder. Copy that. I'll paste it in here. That's the first one. Then new control. You may also want to give your users the option to change the HTML tag. So I have to create a control for this HTML tag. How I can do that is just go back to the controls. Then this time I'll call it maybe heading tag. Then this time I'll choose a select field because the user is going to select from the different tags available. So select. The options are you give it value, double colon, and then label. So I'll say h2, double colon, h2, h3, double colon, h3. And then the default value is h3. So I'll come back and then say h3. The second control is created. Then I'll go to the next one, which is the accent heading. So in this case, the accent heading may just be a P tag. So I just don't need to create the control for that. Maybe it's always going to be a P tag. You might want to create a control depending on how the layout is for the user. So all I'll just do here is copy this. I know the name is accent heading. So I'll come back, then create a new control and then call it accent heading. The default value is accent heading. That's it. Let's go to the next one. This time is the call the lead. So copy all of this default text. Or just cut it. And then I'll come to the control again. Add new control. And this time I'll call it lead. It's going to be a text area field because it's not just a single line text. And then I'll just paste that value there. So we're, we're getting there somewhere. Come back. The next one is the button. So we may want to give it some button text. That's primary action. Let me just copy that. And that will be called button. So new control. I'll call this button. It's going to be a text field. And the default value is primary action. I think the last thing will be the link for it and then the image. So. The next one is the link. So I'll just say new control, maybe button URL. There will also be a text field and then it's the pound sign. New control, the images, image. And this is the default image. So for image, you choose the image. So let me just say image, the name is image. It's not a text field, but a single media because it's an image field. So single media, choose the default value. I think this was the default, then select. And I think we're good to go. I'll save this. Then I'll begin adding all of these controls into the template. So go back to the template now, save it and refresh. 
Now that we've refreshed it, let's start adding all the controls. Start with the accent heading. See how easy it is. I'll just come here, delete the text, dynamic data, and just search for accent heading. That's one reason why I like Bricks. Bricks gives you so many things. So it allows you to search rather than having to scroll down through endless lists. Just search for your tag and you get it. So the next one is the heading. Delete the initial text and then just type heading. This time we're also going to define the HTML tag. So I'll clear this, then choose custom dynamic data and then say heading tag and then the lead dynamic data lead it gives us our lead then the button the, the primary action and look for button and the link is the last thing delete dynamic data button link or button url so that's it then lastly is the image delete this dynamic data image it is always under jet engine components that's what you have to remember so image and we get back the same design we created first but this time we've now created a design that is editable so let's save this and we'll now use this inside of a page so this is just the component itself we've created the component now we have to now use this component in the page that we need it or in the pages that we need it so I'll go over under pages i just create a new page so let's choose pages then new and then i'll say component test page Create the page. Then I will view it on the front end. So now we can start adding all of our design here. So let's say we had a hero section and then this is just the section that goes be below it. So I'll just come over, create a new section first. So this is the section. Then I'll go over to the plus icon to choose a new element. And this is where it is. The component is actually being registered like a new element or a new widget. So you have to just search for it. So feature. So we have our feature card Oscar as a new widget. We can drop that into our section. And here we go. Immediately, we now have our design. So the user doesn't have any way to mock it up. This is all the controls the user has. He has access to general settings and to styles. But we have not defined any style yet. All we have defined is the general settings. So within general, the user can now change whatever you want. So you want to change the heading. You can say this is heading. You can change the tag. We restricted him to only choose H2 or H3. So this way, because some users, if you give them the opportunity, they will make everything in H1. But this way now you've limited their choices. So they can only choose between H2 and H3 for that design. So here I'll just say maybe H2. Then for the accent heading, I'll say not accent. Then for the lead, maybe I'll just delete some of the paragraph. So you see everything just lining up like we created it. Primary action, I'll say secondary. The link, let me just leave it as this. Then the image, click on the image, I'll choose one at random, insert it, and we get our first component. We can reuse it, so create a new one again. Say feature. And we start the process again. So we can choose, maybe this is just a heading. And the same process, you can add whatever you want, and that's how the user can now use it in multiple pages and he has no control over the actual design, but just on the content. That's what makes it powerful. Now we can also actually add styles, but that's where the first limitation is. 
currently with version 3.5.1, you can only change the style of the colors. You can't change like font size or other things, but they'll be working on those later. You can actually use a kind of workaround by creating it as a content. So you can create the styles as content and then change them. But as actual styles, they don't work only for colors. So let's go back and actually add the color. Because as you see right now, you can't change any of the colors of all of these things. They're, they're all fixed. But you can now give the users control over colors. So go back to the card. Say I want to give users the ability to change the color of the heading. So, so I want it the heading color. So I'll go back to the controls now. We have been working on the content tab since. Now we want to go to the style controls. Click on that. I'll click on a new control and say heading color. Choose the name to be heading color. And this is the second problem. It only works with static values. It doesn't work with CSS variables for now. But hopefully it may just be a little bug that will fix up soon. So let's say we want the default to be FF9999. So that's a new control. Then I'll save it and go back to the template, refresh that page because we want to pull in the data. So we want the data to be as fresh as possible. Now I go back to my heading, to the style tab, then under typography, color, then I just pull in the dynamic data. So under raw, dynamic data, and I'll say heading, color, choose that. See, the default value was red. That's why it's turned red. Can I save this? So you can do that for all the other things. But for now, it's only limited to colors. Then let me go to the front end or to the edits, actual edit page. Refresh it. Let me just save it first. Then refresh. You see now, they all start with that red color and they have the opportunity to change them under the style tab. So styles, heading color. You'd think that you can use CSS variables, but like I said already, CSS variables don't work, but you can use a sort of workaround for now. You can go ahead and choose your variable. So let's say I choose this green. Then for now, it only works with the hex values. So you have to go to hex and then just press enter. And now the value has been taken in. If you try to use the other ones, they probably will not work, but the hex value works well. So that's the first bug that you can't use any CSS variable or any other one apart from hex. But let's save it and preview on the front end. As you can see on the front end, this one is that color we gave it, but the other one takes the default color. And that's it, yeah. So now you can give users enough power. I believe in future updates, when they give you extra features that you can add, the, you can now modify it so much for your user so that user has so much freedom to do what they want, but still have enough control by you so that they don't break the layout completely. So that's one good thing. The other thing is that you can actually use this layout even inside Gutenberg. So you're not limited to using the block within the bricks editor you can use it in gutenberg but i found out there is also another bug there i don't know what cost it but if you use something like timber and twig to create your template it will port properly to any other builder but i'm not sure why but let me go ahead and show you create a page i'll just use the about page edit it once you come over here and then go to the plus icon the same way we're able to search for the widget in bricks, you can search for feature. And then that's the feature card. Click on it to insert. See, it inserts it properly, but for some reason, it doesn't insert the styles. So you can, let me open the side control. You can change every other thing. So the content works just fine. So heading, H3, you can change it to H2. You can change the accent heading to Accident heading two and so on, update it. But the trouble is, I don't know why the CSS is not working in Gutenberg. So 
I'm not sure if it is something that is has to do with bricks or with jet engine. We'll have to figure that out later. But you see on the front end, the actual content works just fine. It's just the styles that were not ported in properly. So those are the two minor bugs that I found. But overall, this is a good starting point. Now we can use components. We can get patterns with overrides by combining your already made templates from like Bricksmaven or Brixies or from frames. And then you combine it with the power of Jet Engine. And then finally, you can combine those two with the power of the query loop. And all three will give you something so super powerful. And the user has just enough to create their design. So it's like you're giving them freedom, but just a limited freedom. So this is one good thing about Jet Engine. And I hope it keeps getting better. And I think... That's it. So if you have any questions or any contributions or anything you see that I missed out, please leave them in the comments because we're all learning from each other. So this is my first look. If I missed out anything, please do leave it in the comment section. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.